Hi everyone, welcome back to another Node programming tutorial. Uh, today I'll be covering Node and Express handlebars. And I'll be using this Netflix clone type of website that I created here. It's a, just a very simple little website that I put together. And it has a form right here. So I'll show you how to do form submittal and also how to do paging and routing. When you click on one of these, it'll show you more descriptions on it. So we're going to cover routing and all that. And I'll show you my workspace right here. So we'll be covering how to do routes, views, uh, setting up com components and helpers. And so, yeah, this will be covering Node and Express handlebars. Now, before I start, I want to clear up some confusion that you might run into, which I had the same problem. And when we're talking about Node and Express handlebars, there are two different versions. There is one called HBS, which is short for handlebars. And that is the first one that came out uh, about 11 years ago. Uh, they have HBS. And then just like a year later, they have Express handlebars. Now they are both very similar and you notice that Express handlebars here, it is taken over. However, they're both very similar. It's just the initial setup that can be confusing because they are different on setting up, but after that is very similar. And so in this tutorial, I'll be covering the HBS version on doing the setup because it has a boilerplate on how to set it up. However, I'll include an extra file in here called an example like node express handlebar example. And I'll show you the setup on that one so you can look it over and decide which one you want to do. But like I said, they're very similar. It's just the initial app setup. And then after that, it's all the same stuff. And like always, my code is also available on my GitHub right here at Kodakai. So go there, download this example and follow along. Uh, even though I have this website set up, you won't need to do the same type of design like I did right here. It's just for looks. Uh, it just uses HTML and CSS. But you can follow along and just look at how I program it out and you'll just get it. You know, you don't need this fancy whole design. But I will include this design inside my GitHub if you want to download it. Okay, so let's get started right here. Like always, I always create a folder inside a uh, project file right here. I have one called Sandbox. And these are all of my previous projects here if you look through it. And so I created this folder called Node HBS App. So I'm just going to drag this into my Visual Studio Code right here so it can open it up for me. And then I'm going to open up my terminal by holding Control tilde. You can go to View and open up Terminal as well. But if you're just starting out with Node and you found this video, I really suggest that you go to nodejs.org right here to download Node, install that. But what I do is I use Homebrew. Just go to brew.sh right here and I copy that. And then I just go to my terminal right down here and I can paste it in and it'll install Homebrew for me. So I use Homebrew and I do brew install Node. There's multiple ways to install Node, but make sure you install that first. So what I always do is I always do brew update if you're running brew, and then I do brew upgrade just to get everything updated. So right here, I'll show you my current node version, node-v. So I'm running 17.4, which is the current version. I'll also show you my NPM right here, dash V. I'm running 8.3.1. This is just for reference in case you run into this video like a year later or so. All right, so for this Node HBS version, there is a boilerplate for it that gives you a pre-install package. So all you have to do is just do npm install express generator, just like that. Okay, so after that, we just have to type in express dash dash view equals HBS. Now there are different views for express here. There's also another engine called EJS which is very popular as well. And um, maybe I'll do a future tutorial on that one, but today we are doing handlebars. And then just type in the folder that you want to install this into. I'm going to leave this empty because I want it to go into my current folder right here that I'm working with. Destination is not empty, continue, yes. Now before we do npm start, look at this package right here. It has all these dependencies that we need. So we actually have to run npm install to install all those dependencies. So npm install. And then now we can do npm start. And let's check it out right now to make sure that is running. And there we go, we are on localhost 3000. And it's just very simple, express, welcome to express. That's all there is to it right now. So let's stop this with control C. We're stopping the server. So I'll show you how it works right here. Let's look through this thing right here. 
here's our main app right here. See, it, it gave us all this pre-made code just to run the server for us. And everything is included in here. They gave us views right here and routes. And I'll explain this right here, how views and routes work. So think of routes as the server side of it. See, it runs the coding of it. If you remember our React tutorial, it's the same exact thing. This is just doing the routing. And then it's going to render our front end. Front end is the views right here. You'll notice right here it's rendering index. If I go to index HBS, you see it's just HTML page right here, HTML code. So that is how Express Handlebars work. We have routing for the coding and views is just HTML layout. So if you look at right here, it gave us these three HTML pages right here that it just has basic default stuff. Now, what is this doing right here? So this layout is the main HTML page that gets generated everywhere on every routing and page view that we create. It takes in a body right here, which is our code. It just populates that with our code. And it does that for all of our layouts here. You know, it takes this index right here and puts it in here. And how does it know to do that? Well, our app here is just doing everything for us. So this app right here, it's running and it's telling it to run our server. The difference that you'll see with this and the express dash handlebars is that when it runs the server, it goes into this bin right here with the www. Now we look at this, this handles the port and everything for it to run. See, it's running on port 3000. So it does all the server, the setup here, and runs our port for us, you know, on air right here, and it's listening to the port. So it does all that inside that that file right here. When you take a look at my other example later on for the express dash handlebar coding example, everything is set up in here for the port and all that. So you'll see that code, but just know that with this one HBS, it is putting everything in here for us to run. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go over this layouts right here and I'll show you how to use it. Now I'm gonna show you how to add a header and a footer to this so that I can show you how to manipulate this page and pass things through. It's kind of like HTML when you're doing an include file. I'm gonna show you that right here. We need to create a folder called partials. So let me create a folder right here and it's called partials like that. And inside partials, I'm going to have a header.hbs and another one footer.hbs. Let me give this some code right here. I'm going to say footer, fast equals footer. I'll add in the CSS later. And this is just gonna be a simple p tag Enter, oops. And I'm gonna say coder Kai programming tutorials. Copyright 2022, here we go. Now I'll save that. And then the header, think of it as like, if you'd like to add a menu or something like that. So I'll just do something very simple right here and I'll just give it H1 tag of header, just like that. So we know. We're gonna go back to this layouts right here. Layouts right here. To call those files, what we do is bracket, bracket, greater sign, header, just like that, close it off. And then I'm gonna call the footer. And that's how you include, but we're not finished yet because I need to tell the, the app here that we're using partials, because these are called partials. So let's go back to the app.js right here. And I need to set up this partials. So you notice right here in uh, inside our package.json right here, we have the HBS installed, but we didn't require it yet inside here. So we need to require that. So let's put it right here. var HBS equals require HBS. And I'm going to initialize it right here. HBS dot register partials right here. So now I need to direct it to the views partials folder. So to do that, I'm gonna do a path.join and underscore underscore directory name, views slash partials. And on error, uh, just return nothing, just like that. And there we go, I've registered my partials. If you don't want to do this path.join, you know, there there is an easier way, just go like this, you know, underscore underscore dir name and then you can just add in the views slash partials. So that works as well. It's just two different ways of coding it. 
So I'm gonna save that and here we go. We have everything set up already. And so let's just run this and I'll show you how it looks like. NPM start. Now if I refresh this, see, it shows the header. And then here is my footer, Coder Kai Program Tutorials. Now I wanna touch base on this right here. Remember how I also said there is an express handlebars. Um, if you want to include that with the other, you'll see it in my example file how you require is it's going to look like this press handlebars so it looks like that but like i said we are using the hbs version and this is how we initialize the partials for this one okay so that's all i'm going to do for this layouts right here and i'm going to close this footer uh, like i said i'm trying to make this look a little pretty you know with my uh, netflix clone type look so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include my HTML for my header right now. And uh, I've already created this right here. My header is gonna look like this. It has a nav bar, and then it has this Netflix logo in the upper left. And then, you know, just the right side stuff with the sign in button, but this does nothing. It's just for looks. And this is just very basic where I'm gonna run some style sheets right here in my, inside the style CSS, because this is the public folder for the style sheet. And so I'm going to put that stuff in right now just to make it look pretty. Sorry, I'm not going to step through this because this is just HTML kind of like design and it doesn't fall in with, you know, Node and Express program tutorial. So if you follow along, you'll just understand it when you see me do the forms and the routing and stuff. And you can just pretty it up yourself. And so inside my style sheet here, I'm just going to paste all of my CSS. See, this is all just CSS. And it's just doing a container right here with a Netflix background. It's very simple. Uh, once you learn CSS and all that, just to make everything look very nice. So let me save this. And then inside my index page right here, I'm just gonna have this code right here. And so I'll just step through this real quick right here. I just have like a little sign in form right here. I have a sign up form. And I'm gonna step through how to do these forms and stuff uh, with a little input and a submit button. Um, I'm leaving a link to where I got this code from for the Netflix little scroll and how to set this up. But it just does like this simple carousel right here with, you know, different items that it scrolls through. And then when you click on it, you can view it. So the, the first thing I want to talk about here is if we go to index.js, right? And this index page is saying when we first go to the home page here was just a backslash, just home page. Uh, it's going to render. We can tell it what to render. And we're telling it to render index. You know, our index.js is going to render index uh, HBS. I can tell it to render any page in here, but we're telling it to render index. And the index has this HTML. So that's what it's doing right here. And then you'll notice right here, we can also pass through variables. So it's passing through this title right here with a title called express, right? Here, I'll just call this night Netflix clone, just like that. And if it's passing through this title, well, how do I call this title? I'll do it right here. Right before this unlimited movies, I'll call it title with double brackets like that. So whatever you pass through, I can pass through another variable right here too, you know, or two like that, and then give it whatever text, just like that. So you can pass things through let me just show you how this looks like right now when we run this. It's going to say Netflix clone unlimited movies, right? So let's start this up right here, npm start. Now the server is started and let's refresh this. And you'll see right here, Netflix clone unlimited movies, all right? So that's how you call those variables in each page here. So moving along, you'll notice that we have a form right here. So let's do a form submit. How do we capture form information and route that and submit it. So uh, I have a form with an action of sign up. We can call this anything we want, but I'm gonna call this sign up, right? Cause we're gonna submit an email address to sign up. Right here, I have an input and I have a name of email input. So this is the name right here. And then we have a button with a type submit. So when they click on that button, it's going to submit our input right here with this email input that we're gonna enter in our email. This is inside of the index still. So I'm gonna to go to my index.js right here. We're gonna do a post on this because this is routing to the home page where it just gets the page. Now we're gonna route, we're gonna do a router.post and we're gonna call the sign up that we just called. 
and that takes in a request and a response an arrow function and so in here I'm going to response.render the index page because we're just calling the same page and I'm gonna pass through the title still Netflix clone this time I'm going to pass through the email now how do I get the email from this input right here we're calling it email input so to get that let me set up a email variable for our email and we're gonna say request dot body dot email input so here you know we're taking in the request we're getting from the body the email input and then we're gonna pass that through our variable right here so um, this might be confusing because I'm calling the same name so let me just call this EM short for email like that see I'm getting the email input and I'm just gonna pass it in here and this is the name that we're gonna call it and then if I go back to our handlebar page right here for index I can now use that email variable right here so what I'm gonna do is right up here we're going to detect if an email was submit so with express handlebars right here there are built-in if-else statements but it's very different it's not the same if statement so it looks like this to call it you do bracket bracket hashtag if and then I'm gonna say if the email exists right we're gonna say right here let's give it h1 tag thank you for signing up with and then I'll I'll call out the email name right email and then I'm gonna say else if an email does not exist we didn't submit any emails then we're gonna show us the form right here and to end it it looks like this you have to do this for slash if and so that's how it looks like with this built-in if statement um, if you wait for a couple of minutes here I'm gonna show you how to create our own conditional if statements using helpers I'll do that in a minute here but I just want to show you how the built-in if statement works right here so let's start up our server again npm start and let's go to our Netflix here refresh so I'm gonna submit my email here uh, kodakai at gmail and submit that and you see thank you for signing up with kodakai at gmail so it captured that variable and it passed it through so you see how the post works you work inside the JS file um, you call from our index here I have a form action that directs it to sign up with a method of post and then I have an input right here of email input and when that submit it passes through right here and I can tell it hey look for anything that's posted through this routing right here called sign up and then I set my email right here with the email input then I pass it back through right here I'm gonna render the index I can do anything I want with this if I have a database set up I can store this email and I can just pass it back through through a variable right here and then I can work with it and say hey all right you submitted something thank you and here's the email that you submitted so yeah that's how it works right here so if I go back to the regular page right here see it doesn't detect an email that was submitted and so it just goes back to this form right here so that's how a post works with this now you're probably wondering how does this if statement work can I call it and say if email equals you know like something with gmail inside or or maybe you want to say email does not equal to empty can you use that no this is a built-in very simple true or false function for this and this is the hurdle that I had to get over when I first worked with express handlebars I'm going to show you how to create some helpers right here that will create our own if statement for us but the if statement that's built in here already is just very simple and basic it's just if this email is true or false that's all it's saying if it's true or false and so let's create our own if statement and that's called helpers and so to create a helper I need to create a folder in here and I'm gonna call this folder components like that whoops let me drag this component folder out there we go I want components inside our main root right here and inside components here I want to create a file called HBS helpers dot JS now if you want more information on helpers here is a link to it that I'll include up here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var helper equals bracket like that and let me just do this before I forget module.exports equals helper so we're gonna create some helper functions in here 
we're going to do a if condition statement and that's going to take in one variable the operand variable two and options arrow function so you can find this type of if statement on the web everyone has created this already so i'm just going to take it and show you right here you can copy it from my code too on my github but this is the standard that everyone has created already it just takes the operator right here and it just looks for the case, you know, um, if you're gonna do a if not equal to, then it's gonna check this, does variable one not equal to variable two? If so, then do this, right? So that's all it's doing, and we're creating a helper function right here. And to use this helper function, we have to go back into our app.js, and I'm gonna show you how to set up all the helper functions, because you can add on multiple helper functions. You can go in here and you can do like comma right here and add another one, short text, which will take in a text with end length. And I'm gonna use this short text later. So let me say, show you how it works. Return text.substring zero and minus one. Um, it's just another function to shorten up whatever text I provided with the length that I want. So that's how you can create multiple helper functions. But we have to activate that. So in here, back in our app.js, I'm going to set that up. First off, I need to include it. So let's do a var helpers equals require. And it's inside our components folder right here. And HBS helper is right there. So now that we have the helper, I have to do a for loop for let helper in helpers. And I'm going to say handlebars register helper right here. Register helper. And I'm going to register each one of those helpers that, that we have in there. So helper, helpers, helper. <laughs> so there we go. This is going to register every one of these helper little functions right here. So that's how you register it in here. And now let's do our new if condition statement. So it's going to be, you know, same like that hashtag if underscore condition. And we're going to say if email right here, and this has to be in single quotes does not equal to that's the operator. And then the second variable does not equal to empty, right? And then we have to end that if condition right there. So now we're using our own if statement that we created right here. And that's how it works. And also I need to modify this right here since we're passing through an email down here for our homepage here. I also need to pass in an email that is empty because we have to initialize this right here. Okay, there we go. So let's start our, our server again, npm start. Let's go to our page, refresh. And so right here, it doesn't detect any emails and I put in our email here, submit. And thank you for signing up with. So here is the bad part about this. It it won't pass through a variable after you do a helper function. Like you can't return this type of variable here. So, so I wanna say that is the only bad part with this is with these different if condition statements that we have to create with our helper functions with using express handlebars. With this, I do suggest that you do all of your checking over here and just pass through what you need to check if it's true or false. Otherwise, you have to um, try to program out your own helper function to do that. And like I said, that is the hassle that I am seeing with express handlebars. But if we save this right here, start it up, it does work with the helper functions. When you do that and you see, it does detect it and work for you. So let me stop the server here. And so I showed you how to do a form post right here by rendering any page that you want when you post it and how to route it when you're posting something through, you know, you can call it anything you want. We have a sign up form and then we grab the input and then we're rendering through our index page still. So now I want to show you how to set up a page to do routing. So what I want to do is you notice our scroll bar right here. As I hover over each one of these, I want to route it to a certain page that when I click on this, I wanted to show more uh, information on this, this video right here. And how I'm going to route this is I'm going to create a page that's going to be called movies. 
And with the movies, I'm going to pass through an ID. I can give an ID of one, two, anything like that. So the ID can be like slash movies. For this one, it could be slash one. And then this will be movie slash two, movie slash three, you know, any ID that I want. And so let's create that page right now. Right here, you'll see that I input right here for our carousel. For, so this is the very first little item in that carousel. And I'm giving it a URL of slash movies one, right? With an ID of one. Now, just think through this. If we were to connect to a database and I would loop through and display all my movies with a specific ID and it would have images and all that. And as you click on it, it's gonna go to that URL with the ID in it. So you can call it one, two, you can call it anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be like in order. It can be have a string like ABC2. So I just gave it different little URL names right here with different IDs. So you'll see right here that with our border plate, it created us a users.js file, right? This is just the basic how it's all set up. So let me just rename this to movies, show you how it looks like. Yes, I want to rename that and movies right here. You always need to require the express right here. And then you need to set up the router express.router. And then it's just the regular router.get and then you export that router, right? So how do we get an ID from our URL right here? If I were to give it an ID of one or ABC2, anything like that, that's the ID. How do I get that? So let's go right here and I'm going to put colon ID. So let's grab that ID. Let's do var ID equals request dot params dot ID. And then I'll just do an if statement down here. If ID equals ABC2, okay? Now we'll, we'll do like an else. If not in here, I'm going to render the page that I want. Response dot render. And we want to render a movies page that we're gonna create. And so we also need the movies HBS file, right? So let's go into our views here. So let's create the movies handlebar. And we won't do anything with that yet. Let's just uh, work in here still. We're going to render the movies. We're going to pass all this through it. And then I want to render it and pass in information like the title of the movie. You know, we want, we want to give the image uh, description of the movie. So stuff like that. And with this movie right here that I'm trying to render, it's this Russian doll one. So we're going to get all the information from that. Imagine if we connect to a database and I grab all that information and I put it right here and we'll call it Russian dolls. If you stay tuned for my next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect this through a database and I'll just grab all this for us. But right now I'm just trying to do it just static right now so that you can just learn from it. And here's the image that I'm going to display. See, this is just grabbing it from the Netflix API where I can just show that same image. So I pass that through. I can give it a description on this movie. And I want you to pay attention to this description right here. Instead of giving it a two single quotes like that for the string, I'm going to give it double quotes. And I grab this whole description from IMDB. And I'm doing this double quote because I'm trying to input HTML right here. And uh, you can do single quotes too. You just got to escape things. But I'm just doing double quotes and I'm adding in HTML. And I'm going to show you how to work with that in a minute here. I'm rendering this. I'm passing through these stuff to this movie's handlebar page. So here's our movie's handlebar, right? So let's grab all of those information. Uh, I already set up some CSS for this. So I just have a div container for my movie's container. Then I have a div class with a box in here. And with that, here, watch. I'm just going to end this box div and the movie container because I'm just trying to make it look pretty here. Uh, I have a div photo right here. This is just CSS. So I, I want to show the photo, right? So I do an image source equals. Now let's pass through that image, right? Bracket, bracket image. Because we created an image right here. See that? The way I want to format is, is that I want to show the image first and I'm going to have this info right here. And inside this info, I'm going to have a H1 with the title, title of the movie. And let's break this. And then I'm going to show the description. Now, 
you, you're gonna think that I'm gonna do bracket bracket description right here but remember over here this description I'm passing through HTML and I wanted to show HTML coding in here so when you're passing through with just double brackets like this it's only passing through text if I want to display HTML I got to do three brackets so that's how you display HTML through a variable so this is going to show the p tag and h1 tag and whatever i can make it bold and pretty colors or whatever let's save that right here so we have our image title and description see image title description else i'm just going to response.end it very simple and i'll just say invalid request so that is our movies page right here I accepted an ID. I took in that ID. I'm checking the ID to see which one that I clicked on. I'm going to pass back info on that. Pass it back through our response right here for the movies page. But before we start up this server, let's go back to this app.js. Any new page that you route, you have to include it, right? Any new page that you create. Here's the movies one right here. You have to include it. And then you also have to tell it to use it. So here you'll see that is using the index, right? Here's the index. And then here's our movie. So remember our old page users. So I'm just gonna call this movies to let it use that page. Any new page you create, remember you gotta initialize it, require it, and then you gotta tell it to use it. And let's run our server now, npm start. Server is running. Let's refresh this page here. And so as I hover over this, I didn't create anything for this yet. It's going to break if I click on it. See invalid request because I didn't I did an if statement to only detect this right now. I click on Russian doll and there we go. It has our image, has the title, and then it has the description that I entered in with the p tag. See how it just renders the HTML in here. So let's go back here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to run a helper function in here on this description. So let's go to our helpers right here and let me fix this right here. Substring. There we go. So we also have this short tech function that I created. And I, I said I was going to get back to this. We're going to call this here inside our movies because let's say I want to shorten up our description here. So I'm going to call that function short text. You can just call it just like that. And it takes in a, a text here, right? And then it, we have to give it a length. So short text description and I'll give it a length of just 200 save that and now if we go back to npm start let's start up our server again and refresh our page now let's click on this and you'll see right here see it shortened it up it only took in 200 characters you see how we can call our helper functions anywhere in our handlebar page here it's just calling short text right there and we created a helper for it that's how you run helper function here to make things easier for you. You know, you want to do some calculations and all that. That's how helper functions help you out. So in a real business scenario, if we go back to movies.js here, you know, we entered everything statically. And in a real business scenario, we're going to connect to a database, you know, like MongoDB. Like I said, I'll show you that in my next tutorial, how to connect a database and do all that stuff. But you know, it's not going to have this if statement. What it's going to do is that, let's say we just go through and we're, we're going to connect to a database, right? We get, get the info and then we store that inside a variable called data. So let me say var data equals. And I'm going to show you how to set this up here because I can pass through this whole thing. Let's say we connect to the database and I grab all that info. I can just set it in here called title, you know, Russian doll. I can set everything in here. I'll do the image, right? Description. So let me paste all that again right here. Here's the title, image, description. Like I said, you know, in a real life scenario, we're going to connect to the database and we're going to do all this and we're going to have it in one variable. And then all we have to do is just response.render the page that we want movies and then we pass through that data we're going to call it data data so we're going to pass that through and render it and look how easy that is you know let's say we connect to a database we get everything that we need using the id of course right here and then we just pass it through and then we can use it 
So look at how easy that is. And then if we go back here, I'll show you how to call this now using this new variable called data. So since I passed that whole kind of array type thing, we're gonna put data right here. You just call it like that. Data dot. And you see, everything is passed through easily and it makes it very dynamic. So let me end this here, npm start. Go back home here. And as I click on that, see the same type of info. Let's say I wanna pass through some extra information like I'll create another variable up here called, you know, extra. And I'm gonna put this inside an array type right here. And I'm gonna give it like, let's say year released, right? And that's released in like 2019. There we go. And then I have another, let's say, I'm gonna pass through film location. And location is Hollywood. California, just like that. So you'll see that I have this right here and let's say I wanna add on some more extra information right here, extra. And I can pass through that variable right there, extra, okay? Now I need a comma right here. And I'm gonna show you how to loop through this. So let's go back to the movies.handlebar right here. And so after the description, let me just give some line breaks here. Now I'm gonna call the each function now this is built in you can call it each and we call it extra right for each extra we will end it i always like to just end things first like that okay so inside here it's going to loop through it and give it p tag here and released in and just call it year released let's do the next one filmed in film location, just like that. So it's gonna loop through this that we have, this list right here, and we'll just show everything using the each built-in function. Let's save that. Whoops, you know what I forgot to do right here. You see how we're using the data variable? So I gotta put data.extra. So let's resave that. Let's run it again, npm start. So let's go down here, click on it and see, released in, oh, do we not give it the correct release date? And then I also misspelled this right here, year released. Okay, so that's there. Let's restart the server, npm start. And let's go back here. Let's go down here, click on it. And there we go. See how it just went through each one of those lists and released in 2019, filmed in Hollywood, California. So yeah, those are the things that I want to cover in how to use Node with Express Handlebars right here. I'll leave some comments in here so that you can see the different ways that it has, you know, remember how we have double brackets here to output a string, uh, triple brackets to output HTML string. And you can also do comments like this, you know, and then they have the built-in functions for if and each, very basic and standard. And if you want, you can create your own helpers file right here. So this tutorial just really stepped you through on how to do routing, how it plays in with the server side here, and then the front end with the handlebar itself, rendering HTML, but also how to use functions in here as well. And like I said, in the next tutorial, I'll connect a database, but if you can't wait for it, you can always just watch my React tutorial because it's very similar. I have a Node and React tutorial that connects to MongoDB as well as the SQL database. And I'll be doing the same thing where I connect to a database grabbing information just to show you how exactly it, it works without entering all the static information because we can grab all of this information from the database dynamically and just populate it through and then it'll just display on our page for us right here. So that's just a basic tutorial on this on how to do express handlebars. I uh, hope you continue to learn about these different type of frameworks uh, and which one you rather use. I do want to say that Express makes it a little bit easy on just running it because you saw how I just run this right npm start and it just runs the server and front end for us and with React we had to run both the server and front end on separate ports. Imagine when if you have a site like where the back end crashes and then the front end is not going to work right. 
and you have to restart that server but with this it just runs it all at once it's just very different ways of doing things to see which one works for you better both of them have their own quirks and good and bad ways of doing things right because like i said i didn't really like this part of it on how to create helper functions i really wish they would just have all the basic helper functions for you all the conditions and all that just pre-made and made it easy so hopefully they'll have that in the future but for now i hope you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this page if you like i'll put everything inside my description if you want to see where to get all my code at github and with that i hope you enjoyed the rest of your day i'll see you in the next tutorial kodokai out Thank you.